told me cook doobie. No told me not to let these niggas book doobie. Merge told me by all means protect my brand. Pest told me fuck these niggas doobie. You the fucking man. Every verse is like a hurts for niggas. Do you understand? I ain't into that last challenge, so you niggas have a chance. I am not you niggas equal, just in case you was confused or you had shit misconstrued. I'm that motherfucking dude. They say doobie gon' pop your shit. You ain't heard another nigga coming quite like this. I was in the cell praying for a light like this. I swear to God, you niggas never had a night like this. Two exotic chocolates and a light bright twist. Fuck a duck, duck, goose, they playing suck, suck, kiss. And I am not debating with you niggas about who bars is better. You ask me, fuck the other side. Ours is better. Pistols under pillow, K resting on a nightstand. Play with me and mine, and I'll shorten up your lifespan. The job is killing whack rappers, well, you got the right man. I lay the blueprint down. Draw up some nice plans. And don't worry about the budget, that's the question that follow. It's a light demolition with a standard remodel. And this new house is built on a solid foundation of like 10 dope artists that can really rock the nation. These other niggas in the way, like old pain is so boring. We that new splash, my cousin Mike can do the flooring. Turn his Arizona hip hop house into a mansion. It's some young niggas coming, gon' help with expanding. Bitch, I'm well connected, and I'm well respected. Yelling, who gon' check her? Think again if that thought was to ever fucking try and test them, nigga. I don't give a fuck who dropped, I'm never threatened, nigga. Some of y'all only still rapping cause I let you niggas. I know everything I'm saying, yeah, I bet you niggas even breathe at me wrong. I'll chin check you niggas. Clear to see no matter who, it ain't no stopping me. And don't compare me to these niggas' mediocrity. Bitch, I'm Jada, Jeezy, Tip, Pop, Socrates. Fecal minded niggas can't decipher my philosophy. You wonder why these niggas think twice about trying me. And all the bad bitches keep getting called eyeing me. Mama mentality, no, there's no I in team. But it's an ME in that bitch. If that pussy squirt is probably ME in that bitch. And a rental on the road, who? Me and that bitch. These facts, nigga. Somebody gather all these whack niggas. Before I up this Gucci bag. Shout out Black Media. Shout out my motherfucking DJ, DJ Pass. Shout out Queso on the motherfucking keys. You hear me? Hey, this is what real Arizona hip hop sound like. Don't get confused with that dookie shit these niggas keep pushing in front of you. You hear me? It's me. into nothing about nothing i am your host two total superstar that is core dj off it is a bitch you already know what it is <laughs> <laughs> and our first guest is big Dube. let's go let's go yes sir hey your motherfucking legends big doobie man what's going on how, how First, first and foremost, for people that's just watching this, that probably just got their first YouTube account, who is Big Doobie? Just introduce yourself. We know who you is. Who is Big Doobie? Man, I am the one and only no phony. Back without the motherfucking Ronnie. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> the big cactus himself. You know what I'm talking about? Mr. Turn around and see what you're turning down, bitch. You know what I'm talking about? I am him. You came in here with the taco meat. <laughs> hey. the taco the meat show? Taco Listen, meat is out. I get told out there, you, out. I told you I was going for Colombian drug war today. That's the look for the Did you just get back from Mexico? I always just got back from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> always just got back from Mexico. Que pasa? You got your uh your Easter pink on. Hey man, you know, I'm I'm feeling festive today. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, thought, you, thought, oh you, you thought you had Hoochie Daddy shorts well, on. We, we declared that they're not. Yeah, they're not Hoochie okay. Daddy shorts. They're a little, they kind of Hoochie Daddy shorts. That's just for me sitting nah, down. Okay? They're a little Hoochie Daddy when you sitting down. Hoochie Daddy shorts. Suck that. Suck that. We, when I stood up, this is mid knee. But okay? you're sitting. Uh, mid knee. Yeah. See, Polo, Polo is known to give Hoochie Daddy shorts. Yeah, man. They're, you're like a conservative Hoochie Daddy. You know what I mean? Like, they are, but that's because they're. Don't worry about it. My knees is nice, nigga. <laughs> yeah, do you cool. like Hoochie Daddy? Sh- would you, do you prefer on certain people? Certain, okay. Nigga, don't say it like that. Like, uh, <laughs> I 
<laughs> on certain people. How does the legs got to be built? How the legs? They got to look be... nice. You feel me? Like you got to look nice in the hoochie daddy shorts. Like don't, worry, anybody buddy. just can't wear hoochie daddy shorts. Like I don't want to, nigga. I don't want to be but in a, on the But you got him on right no, now I when don't. you sit down. Nigga. So, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? This is bullshit. This is, this is bullshit. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead and pull him down. Yeah. Nigga. Sit up. <laughs> so you got a uh, big doobie. Uh, you from you from Detroit originally? Correct. And how? When did you come to Phoenix, Arizona? Uh, first time was the year two thousand. Um, I came out here on some summer. Twenty two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fact. Don't try to act like that nigga's old. Like, I was That's a young. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, like, like I came out here and was already an uh, old nigga or something like that. <laughs> nigga, I came out here in school still. I'll just, just count the years. I was know. a little ass boy. <laughs> I came out here for some summer vacation type shit. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Shout out, you know, my aunt and uncle. Uh, y'all know Mike and Dre Doobie. Like, yes, legend, legendary, legends. Their parents. That's you know we're real blood relatives. Those are my first cousins. You know what I'm talking okay. about. So. They mama is my daddy's sister. So they brought me out here for a summer vacation and my mind was blown. I had never really been outside of Detroit or maybe Canada, but I never seen like Mexican kids or no white kids or anything like that, like ever in my life. So I came out here and I thought like one day I was just going to wake up and everybody was going to be like, psych, we all black too. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it was a joke. You know what I mean? Like, I was waiting like, man, it's a camera around here somewhere. Like, it can't be this kind of people just in the world and I ain't never even knew about it. You know what I mean? So Detroit is like all black, especially in the 90s. And, you know, growing up in the 90s, like, I I never seen it. So I was, it was a culture shock for me. And um, I'm like, I want to go to school here. I want to see, I want to see what that's talking about. Right. So my auntie like, all right, like, you can stay. And I went to Chandler High School. And you went to Chandler. Hold on, you Chandler. You and I from the same hood. I graduated. I'm not. I didn't. Hold up. I'm not from Chandler. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. where I'm located now. Oh uh, yeah, I but. graduated Chandler High School, man. Like I, I'm a real wolf. You know what I mean? Shout out all my Chandler High School. I started to go to Chandler. Did you play a uh, defensive tackle at right. Chandler? Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, you average some sex? Uh, I, what did you do, dude? I was very much distracted. When <laughs> I oh, shit. Life. So I, I went to Chandler to play football. Let's get it right. Because when I came, when I decided I was going to go to school here, it was kind of like a little bidding thing between Hamilton and Chandler. You know what I'm talking about? Like Hamilton was new. Terrell Suggs had just left Chandler and went to Hamilton. Salute Terrell and, Suggs. Yeah, man. Like I, So everybody was like, yo, you want to go play You know, ball? Go to Hamilton Woo. They're like, but if you go to Chandler, you know, it ain't as big as the name. Woo, woo, you can shine more. Like, Hamilton was definitely the juggernaut at the time. Right. You know what I mean? Like, in the early 2000s. So, I'm like, fuck all that. I want to go to Chandler. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to go where the hype at. I want to go where, you know what I mean? Niggas ain't so hype about it, so we can turn this bitch up type right. shit. But like, I get to Chandler, and it's all these niggas are superstar athletes, too, man. Like, <laughs> I don't know what – I. that's not what I was experiencing in Detroit. All our athletes are smoking and drinking. You know what I'm talking about? Like, we – we doing other kind of shit. I get out here, these niggas is getting ready for the league. You know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, so they clean, they yeah, square bears, all Derek type Richardson, of shit. Like my boy Derek, I went to school with, he went to the league. You know, every niggas was getting full ride scholarships and all that type of shit. So I play football, you know what I mean? But I and I ran track. You know what I mean? Well, Let's let's clarify. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, you ran track, nigga. I did, did shot put, shot put, 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 He's a big man, but let's not act like he can't. What's your four three, dude? Give us your what's your four three? My forty. Your forty. What's your forty? My fastest forty was probably about a four eight. Okay, four eight. I probably ran about a four eight forty. You know what I'm saying? Which that is, nigga probably had a five two. You crazy? I smoke. <laughs> listen, I just let's get this on the record. I just smoked DJ R in basketball you did. not too long ago. Okay? At main so, event. <laughs> let's, at let's main event. Listen, oh, okay. Listen, he did, he did. I hooped her out. I hooped her at main event. Way. But if we get on the court Either in real way. life, you're not gonna beat me in real life because them knees. I would probably dunk on. I don't know what she think I Bruh, got over here. Bro, you are not about to dunk on me. <laughs> I don't know what you think. These you can't now. dunk out. What are you talking about? Would she like to place the right? I think. I think she could beat me in basketball. Tell you're not even on. Doobie. This nigga, you, you don't seen that nigga play. You're not even on my level, Tom. 
I have I'm torture rack. Oh, okay. My tone, stop, bro. I'm stop. just letting you know. Like, I will I, I will smoke you in the foot race too. Don't get it. <laughs> I am not one of them big slow niggas. I got wheels. G. You got wheels? Nah. Okay. I definitely always remember my son wheels. fast. Just know he got half of that for me. Okay. Period. Okay. So you was you went to Chandler, you was playing football. And I was a gospel rapper. A what? Gospel rapper? Just what? Wow, you do got the T.D. Jakes voice. Listen, I was. <laughs> I'm, telling T.D. Jakes. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, me, Mike, and Dre. So Mike and Dre, when I moved here, they already were a gospel rap group group called FOG, Followers of God. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. The Doobie, Mike Doobie and Dre Doobie was a gospel rap group. 100%. Law. This is crazy. I'm Child. telling y'all, this I'm is giving crazy. y'all the sauce. Listen, I'm telling you, my Arizona roots Lord. run deep. They run deep, <laughs> okay? My Arizona roots run deep, okay? So they had a gospel rap group, FOG, you know what I'm talking about? And then they had, like, a singer that was under the Wait, label. Wait, what did man. FOG stand for? Followers of God. Uh-huh. Okay. Listen, y'all don't know if y'all ever been on the South Side and seen a, a sharply dressed middle-aged man in a fog wear outfit. We had... The number Fog one, Christ, the number one Christian clothing line <laughs> in America. What? Yeah, wait, up. wait, what is going Fog on? I swear, no, no. Listen, <laughs> I'm talking about my. The first time I seen a hundred thousand dollars was from Christian clothing wear. You know what I'm mm. like? I ain't mad at that. Eighteen years old. At eighteen years old. You know what I'm like? Hey, you're legend. Crazy. Hey, you're motherfucking legend. You have no idea. I've toured the entire United States. Every big church you can think of. I've toured and done youth events and had thousands of people singing my gospel songs to me that I never met in my life. You know what I'm talking about? Like I was way bigger as a gospel artist than I've ever achieved yet as a, you know, an you independent say a artist verse? right Can now. Can you say a verse right now? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> say wait, a verse. Wait, listen, so- <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I'm going to tell you how serious it is. Okay. It's people right now, like, shout out Blaine, like, uh, Blaine that runs Valley Vigils. These are people, Isaiah, all these people I've known since those, that's how I met them was either through the, they went to my aunt and uncle church or we went to school together. Okay. They will sing Big T, the Demon Killer songs, word for word to this day. They know them verses still. I don't, you know what I mean? I had a long life of marijuana, alcohol, sometimes a little ecstasy, you know, with Molly at times, you know, <laughs> you a couple of mushrooms much, much. in there, but uh, a long time since Wait, then. Wait, so, so you was gospel rapping and smoking weed and doing all no, that? No, no, you no, better no, not be. No, no, Can't see, that's, this is how it ended, I'm going to tell you. So I'm, I came out here, and then when I turned 18 and I was able to leave, I retired as a gospel rap artist the same day. You know what I'm saying? said, fuck this shit. <laughs> because I knew I, I wasn't with playing. said, fuck it. I wasn't with playing both sides of the fence. I had you already can't. stopped going to church because I'd be out partying and then trying to come into church talking about work the sounds today or something. You know what I mean? I'm over there passing out, hung up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my yeah. auntie is one of them black church, you know, she the pastor, the bishop and the wife. She don't have no problem calling me out in the middle of everything. I'm over there, pass out. A big T. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> I'm in there, everybody looking at me at the same time. Like, you know what? This is my last Sunday. God, I was, <laughs> <laughs> it's me. You know what I'm so I, oh, when me. I turned 18, it was, you know, that's how, that's how it ended for me. You know what I mean? Wait, I so how, how did the, how did the, uh, the, what's it called? Secular? Life? Yeah, secular. How did the secular life sway you away no, it wasn't from no the church? No, I was there. I was that. I only rapped in church because that was my only option. Okay. Move, when I moved here, they, I'm like, I, this is how I originally first saw you and met you. It was like the year 2000. When I moved here, Mike and Dre took me to Mill to rap in a cypher as oh, a kid. Shit. You know what I mean? I saw you. I saw Kitch Kitchen. I yeah. remember um, even Justice was out there. You know what I mean? Like I used to see niggas, and I was the only like kid that would get in the cypher and really chop shit up. And but they, it was a secret, you know what I mean? Like we had to go back to the house and it was uh, yeah. praise the Lord, you know what I mean? Like it was it was nothing that we was able to really go home and talk about. But Mike and Dre used to always want to take me down there to the cipher, like to headhunt niggas and be like, "Yo, my little cousin, dope. He a kid. He eat niggas." Like, and and I used That's to get crazy. in those ciphers on meal, you know what I'm talking about? By the Jack in the Box, all like real original Arizona hip hop shit. I was a part of that shit as a kid, you know what I'm talking about? So. 
That's I always wanted to just and then at Chandler High, I got rapping banned at Chandler High because wait banned a hundred percent. Like anybody who was in Chandler High with me, they will tell you, Mr. Knudsen came over the loudspeaker after I I had the entire school follow me <laughs> to battle. You know what I mean? Like I was I was I had a lined up like these girls that was tried to diss me. You know what I mean? Like it it was known that I would diss niggas and I was like a battle rapper. Right, yeah. Right. So that was I was a kid though. It was fun to me. I, it was it came very easy. So these girls wrote a rap and tried to diss me. So I I had a response that was waiting and the whole school was prepared for you it. Co- Dude, you cooked some girls? Eight of them. You know what I'm talking about? Eight of them. <laughs> Eight piece chicken nugget. Eight, <laughs> eight piece. You know what I'm talking about? Went down the line. Bing, 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 bing. And the whole school had like came, you know, we had off campus lunch and all that. So Chandler High used to be set up differently. It used to be like a neighborhood behind behind there. They didn't I don't know what they did, how they turned into a field now, but it was living people over there. You know what I'm talking about? So they kicked all their asses out. They the whole school followed me out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I shut down that whole like no traffic could go through nothing. You gotta think like I'm talking about literally the whole student body was outside surrounding me, and I'm standing up on a car serving up hot wraps for all of these oh, chicks. You know what I'm talking about? Like, cooking. And then the next day, they banned it. He took him out a notebook full of raps, <laughs> and then he banned it. He, no battle rapping allowed at Channel High School, man. Shout out, Mr. Because you was hurting feelings. Yeah, man. She, they tried to fight me a few of them. He cooked eight ch- females. Yeah, I, I had. Their boyfriend is popping on your head. No, they knew better. <laughs> Niggas absolutely no have, have you seen any of those women since then? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. How, how did that interaction go? Did did you? Did they you love me. Like they love me. They I knew, knew we was gonna kids. Say that. We was kids then. <laughs> <laughs> they knew we was kids, and they knew that it was well deserved. You know what I'm talking about? Like y'all, the one that tried to poke the bear. They didn't like the attention that I was getting from all the races. You know what I mean? The whites is loving me. The Mexicans love me. They don't understand this shit, so they want they want a piece of the pie and. It wasn't happening. I was destroying mm-hmm. all opposers. And everybody know it's a lot of rappers that came out that I taught these niggas how to rap when I was in high school. I wrote niggas first raps they ever rapped. But I ain't gonna, you know. But they know. They know who we, we need a name. <laughs> they know. Just one no, name. No, yes, no. you can't come to nothing about nothing. <laughs> Period. <laughs> and not say nothing. And not say nothing. <laughs> they not rappers What's the no name? more. Maybe listen. I just know that there was rappers that considered themselves Arizona independent artists. And when I met these niggas, they did not know how to rap. And we've had in-depth conversations and I wrote these niggas they very first raps and taught them how to put their bars together and let them take it off from there. You know what I'm talking about? Like that's a that's a true fact story. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I've been that nigga since they ain't gonna give me no type of credit either. No, I don't need it. They know. <laughs> <laughs> They can have it, my nigga. I don't, I don't they do it for act that. Like they did it by themselves. Hey, I don't, I do it because if I genuinely fuck with you, my nigga, like I don't do. It's a lot of shit that happens behind the scene that I don't come online and just say, "Oh, I did this for this," or "We did." Oh, I had this and this did this. Like I don't do shit for that. You know what I mean? Like if I fuck with you, if it's a way for you to elevate, I could put you on it. I'm gonna put you on it, my nigga. And you don't. I don't got to, I ain't going to never say nothing. If you choose to say something, salute you. You know what I mean? I appreciate it, my nigga. But I didn't do this for no shout out. I did this because I fuck with you in real life and I want to see my niggas win. Right. right. Even if it puts you further than me. You know what I mean? If I don't give a fuck. If, if, if it shoots you out of here, nigga, and I'm still here, if it was my alley-oop, I'm still happy, my nigga. Like, right. that's meant for you. That's not for me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have no kind of jealousy in me. Like it made me nauseous to think about that kind of shit. Right. Like, that's a, that's like a um that's a loser's mentality. Yeah, man. Like yeah, no another nigga light is gonna dim mine. That's right. what I'm saying. Like so, I want to see all my niggas win, all my niggas shine. I want everybody to be up. You know what I'm talking about? I don't want to be the only one. Fuck all that. That's real. When when so when did you like get into like the Arizona hip hop scene before before the scene where it is right now? Like when. When did you like? Okay, I'm I'm starting to do features with this person, this person, and you know, um, 2019. I started in 2019, like be, because we had the club promotion shit, and that started in. I came home in 2008. That's when I met my nigga. Uh, like my first, right when I got out of jail, I got out of jail in May, and when Obama had his inauguration, that was our first ever Doobie Boy event. Um, was the inauguration party on a Tuesday, some shit like that. So. 
Um, we did club promoting. I, I still never really, like, I drop a song here and there. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we had the Twitter party and all of that, and I go perform, do a little song, but I never was an artist. I was just a rapping ass nigga. You know what I mean? I was right. just a rapper. But I never, not until 2019, December, you know what I mean? That's when I hit that crossroads. Like, all right, nigga, you either finna do this rap shit or you finna take this bread and go buy you a Chick-fil-A franchise or some shit. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it was one of the two. So I started to invest. I started to take it seriously, cut off some of the shit that I was doing that would have hindered me from being able to move forward with the music shit and and jumped in the head first. What took you so long? Man, I was I was <laughs> I was committed to the I was committed to what I was doing before. You know what I'm talking about? Like, and I I'm not so like a lot of niggas rap about shit and claim to be shit, but I'm a real street nigga. So I didn't even have a I didn't even have social media prior to 29. There was no big doobie Instagram in 2018 or 17, 16, right. 15. None of that shit existed for me because when Twitter first started, I had a Twitter and a nigga took me to court and brought in a bunch of tweets and tried to make it seem, you know, he a drug lord and he having what? sex with judges, all this type of weird shit. Nigga tried. So I was completely turned off. Wait, on did you say media. sex with judges? Yeah, man. Like, <laughs> wait, 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 was Doobie glazing the judges? The judges? Yams? <laughs> I plead the fifth. You know what I mean? What's going on here? I plead the motherfucking fifth, man. But they they brought in all these what tweets, the man, in the court. Like, and that's when I'm like, what the fuck? This nigga like printed the I'm talking about books of this shit, thick, thousands of pages worth of tweets over the over a course of like two years where he trying to convince a judge like to to give me some charges type shit. Like Stemming from an assault charge when I beat the dog shit out of the dog. You know what I mean? Right. Like, but I took the assault charge. It was mine. You know what I mean? I take that. He, he <laughs> it was mine. I beat your ass, nigga. Yeah, I beat the dog I shit out. I faded him. Yeah. I, I, I put feet and hooves on All him. types of them. You know what I'm talking about? So I take that, but they trying to trump it and bring it in these tweets. So that really had me turned off. So I still had a flip phone. I, I like you can go in old kitchen drawers and find like 120 old flip phones because that was my life. That's what I was committed to. So I didn't music wasn't on my I, I was always just like, yeah, I know I'm this is probably what I was made to do right. because of how dope I am. Like I knew I had a gift. Like my niggas would tell you, like my niggas really been pushing me all these years to stop bullshitting and get into music. Like right. more than I would push myself. My niggas, my niggas used to get mad at me. Like, nigga, what the fuck is you doing? We supposed to be out of here already. You know right. what I mean? Like, and I'm just like, my nigga, let me go get these bowls. You know what I'm talking about? I'm like, I got to go get this pack right now. And nigga, we'll worry about this rap shit later. And then, like I said, it came to a point where it was like, oh, shit, later is now, nigga. Like, you better do this shit before you ain't going to be able to do this shit no more. So, do you feel like you had to, you got to pick, like, you can't be street nigga and a rapper. You got to pick one of the two. Certain, the certain. Yeah. Like you cannot be an active street nigga, actively in the streets doing street nigga shit and then wanting to be a successful artist. You know what I'm talking about? Like, because you won't be able to move around the way that you should be. Right. Mm. Your time will not be able to be put into that other. Sh you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's too much of a distraction when you really doing what you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can do some little side shit and do, you know, until right. You can't do that shit no more. But as for what I was on and for what I what type of time I was on, there was no way. I didn't have time to be going to no studios or or you know, trying to figure out marketing and promoting and, and making songs like, no, my nigga, we'll go to the studio. Like sometimes I go to the studio even then, just spending a bunch of money not knowing what the fuck I was doing. Like we've literally been in the studio for like 23 straight hours and recorded like 50, 60, 70 songs before I ever release any one of them. And I don't right. even know where these shits at now. You know what I'm talking about? Like, right. I can tell you, because I didn't know nothing about shit. Like, I'm just like, oh, this is my niggas. These are his studios. You know, shout out my nigga Real, man. Shout out my nigga Sir Doty. <laughs> we used to go, you know, my nigga was with me. We'd be in the studio daytime, nighttime, daytime again. You know what I'm talking about? Just recording, 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 recording. I know that there's at least, you know, between that and what I did, like, I had... Call myself starting a record label, split a lit, split a wig records when when um during the MySpace days. Split a, split a wig, split a wig records. Split a wig. I was very, I was very <laughs> much out of control. Okay, <laughs> I was very much out of control. But that's until I went to jail. You know what I mean? One of the niggas who I had under me, you know, the whole snitching situation. Nigga snitched on me. I'm oh my god. You know what I mean? Like so, I ended up having to go sit my ass down for a year 
fighting on this case. They trying to give me like 56 years. You know what I'm talking about? So when I came home, that shit was over. Wasn't no more of that. Like, niggas talking about split a wig. You might as well be talking about throw up in my, you know what I mean? Like, right. That shit is dead. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, man, like that's what took me so long though. I was, I so was too. So, so you was, you was, you know, you, you was being a street nigga. You was in that life. You was hustling. And then your cousins, Mike, that's your cousins, right? You said those yep. cousins, Mike, yep. Dre, they killing the club scene. Mm-hmm. Like they, they, they taking over Arizona. Like they having the nightlife popping. Did they ever say okay? Because they were working with Judge the Boss back then. A lot yeah. of ZBE. They yeah. was they was pushing Judge OTS. OTS they was pushing OTS. Yeah. Did they ever say okay? Let's use our brand to push Big Doobie to the forefront as far as hip hop goes. Like having you open up for all these artists, yeah. or you were just you were just in the street. No, um. So the Doobie Boy shit. Like, let's get it right. I am an original Doobie Boy. <clears throat> like. Like the very first event, me, Tori, T Mac Doobie, Mike and Dre, we promoted, we was out at, you know, putting flyers in niggas' cars and hitting parking lots and all. That was us. You know what I mean? We laid the groundwork. We split the first bag. You know what I'm talking about? The very first Doobie Boy bag was split between us. You know what I'm talking about? So I was there for all from 2008 all the way up until like I had my daughter. And I went to, I caught a FMR port card like in 2010. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, um, so that's kind of when I kind of backed off because I had actually caught a F. So I'm like, damn, you know, I had to go sit down for a little bit. But that's when I kind of was like, all right, I was getting burnt out from the club. You know what I mean? Like we was in the club Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sometimes Sundays. You know what I mean? Like terrible life. Five days a week. You know what I mean? Like we we ain't this bitch partying, <clears throat> doing all kind of reckless ass shit. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and I was one of the most reckless niggas. You know what I'm talking about? So <laughs> I I was getting burnt out. You know what I mean? Like, and then I fuck around and had a daughter, so I'm like, just give me an excuse to fall back from the club. But they kept, you know, Michael Dre just kept going full force, but. Yes, to answer your question, yes, I had, like, I remember when Judge, like, I was in that competition at Stoudemire's when oh, Judge wow. won. You know, I was in that shit. My nigga was on stage with me. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Like, wow. I was in it, but I still, like, niggas only knew me from being in the streets and being a doobie boy. You know what I mean? Like, niggas didn't know that I rapped and no shit like that, but there was plenty of shit that I was a part of, but... I never capitalized on the momentum okay. from it or nothing like that. Like, I would do that shit and then be done with it. You know what I'm talking right. about? Like, all right, let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming type shit. Like, nigga, I won 10 nights in a row on Power 92 or 98 back in the day with J Times 3 when he was doing Oh, when Sife, when Sife was on there. So you was all dead. So you super, all, you super connected. Part of all of that. You know, J Times 3 is my man. It's like, like, shout out J. And that was Amari Stoudemire, homeboy Mike, who plugged me. Uh, Mike, you know, part of the group of niggas that Mari brought down here from Florida. Right. We play even Rocket. That's how I met Rocket Dobbins. Me and Rocket Dobbins played college football together. You know what I'm talking about? Like he played at PC. He was the star running back. You know what I'm talking about? I was in the lunchroom killing niggas with the flows, and Mike took me up to go meet J Times Three at the radio. I didn't even know. I don't know if he was rapping then. You know what I mean? I don't know if Rocket Dobbins was a rapper at that time. He was Rodney the running back. You know what I'm talking about? Like, he was a, I thought that nigga was finna go to the NFL the way he was out there at PC. And he won the championship. You know what I'm not, like, not to cut you off, but uh, me and DJ, I was talking about this earlier. Is something about Arizona rappers doing anything athletic? I don't know. I just, I don't know. There I, is certain ones. <laughs> Certain ones. I saw Merkham shooting the basketball. I was disgusted. I just oh. say that respectfully. Just, <laughs> it was it was nasty. Nah, my just, man, I saw him in defense mode. I was like, just get up. Just get up. Just get up. Just, I just, up. Oh, no, so about athletic. But keep going. That's but see, that's what I mean. He was an athlete first. Like my nigga was raw. He was the star running back at PC, and and we won the championship around that motherfucker, man. Mm. Like, you know, shout out PC, man. Like Phoenix College, um, but. That's how I met. That's when I first met Rockadopolis. That's when that was the J Times three days. But like I said, I always been a dope ass rapper. Like niggas listen to my shit and lyrically, niggas hear like niggas not really fucking with me bar for bar. I don't give a fuck who what what. I don't give a fuck. I, that's how I feel, and that's how everybody around me feel. Like Period. niggas make niggas make some dope songs or whatnot. Like niggas be dope, but I is I'm God level with these bars. You know what I'm talking about? Like so. I've always been that though, ever since high school. But I, 
that's why niggas used to get so mad at me. Like, yo, what the fuck? Did you just sit here and like, <laughs> like I've been offered deals, nigga. Uh, TVT Records when when they took over and signed Lil Jon and all them niggas. Uh-huh. I was in Lake Havasu at the at the fucking Budweiser party and the same shit. They was asking people to come up and rap in front of TVT Records e- executives and shit. So it was like seventeen niggas lined up. I took the mic and I just went down the line and roasted all 17 of the niggas and offered any one of them a mic and nobody took it. And them niggas offered me a contract right there on the spot. And, and then I went to jail. You know oh, <laughs> damn, <laughs> really? Like, that you was young. You know what I'm yeah, that's what I mean. But that's another reason why I feel like it's perfect for me right now because I wasn't mentally prepared for that type of shit as a younger nigga because right. I was too entrenched into what I was on. Like I would have blew the bag, you know what I'm talking about? Right. Like me knowing me knowing back then the type of shit I was on, what I would have tried to take an opportunity and turn it into, I would have blew the bag. You know what I'm talking about? Like I would have been a failed story. You know what I'm talking you about? So fumbled the bag. A hundred percent. So <laughs> now it's perfect. You know, I was able to grow up some mature, you know, really understand the business, you know what I mean? And, now I'm geared up to be the richest rapper Arizona ever produced. That's my goal. I don't know what these. You want to be the richest. You want to be ever. the richest Arizona rapper ever. Ever. Mm. That's a great goal. At least you know what you want, because a lot of these other niggas don't know what they want out right. of it. Right. Right. Be richest. I'm talking about ever. ever. I'm talking about rich, rich. Like <laughs> you gonna see. So you know how, I mean? how? So how? So how do? How do? We, how do we achieve that of you becoming the richest rapper ever? Like, like. First of all, what what's your thoughts on the landscape right now of Arizona hip hop? Like, yeah. what's the land? What's what's your thoughts on the whole landscape? Like, I feel like it's evolving. I feel like it's getting, you know, I in my personal opinion, it's getting better. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like people are starting to because the way the industry went. They allowed a lot of whack shit to blow. You know what I mean? So that gave every whack nigga who wasn't in the industry the license to feel like they can come outside. You know what I mean? But now they're starting to, I feel a shift. Like, nigga, if you're not dope, motherfuckers is not going to have a problem telling you that you're not dope. And it's not, nobody's hating on you, nigga. You are really ass. And and when you compare it, like, (laughs) it's a fact. This is, this is a fact, huh? <laughs> like, this is, all you have to do is like, my nigga, listen to your music, my nigga, and listen to whatever <laughs> artist that you think that you know niggas is big enough. Better. Like, use me. You, you, y'all can use me if you want to. You know what I mean? Like, listen to your lyrics. Say that shit out loud when you talking that scoopity boop 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 bullshit. And then listen to some shit that I said, my nigga. And imagine say what. <laughs> What Big Doobie say this dumb ass shit? No, hell no. Then it's probably whack as fuck, my nigga. Not necessarily saying I only I'm the only nigga, but use any one of the dope artists that's out here, my nigga, and compare yourself to them before you want to ask niggas for accolades and want niggas to be big up in your music and shit and think niggas is hating when they tell you it's dookie, my nigga. Because I'm gonna tell you honestly, most of this shit is really dookie, my nigga. I let my niggas who don't rap. They not in the industry. They not part of the hip hop circle. I'll let them listen to you niggas' music. I'll put it on and just play it. It won't even say shit. Niggas be like, yo, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Facts. Yo, son, this is uh MC MC Levine. <laughs> you know MC about? Levine. This is MC Levine, my nigga. He from out here, man. Turn this shit off. Niggas roasting me if I play some of you niggas' music. It's only a few artists out here I could play you niggas' music around my niggas, around my people, and they be like, yeah, this shit banging. So it ain't that niggas is hating on you. Niggas who don't know you at all feel the same. Like, my nigga, who are you trying to impress? Other rappers? Or are you trying to get some fans? Or are you just making this shit because I just like to make music? I just just like to make music. Well, you niggas in a way. Don't don't expect to be treated the same way as niggas who take it seriously with a real goal. Uh, my goal is to be the richest, meaning I have to be the dopest, meaning I have to be the illest nigga. So right. all of that shit goes with that shit, nigga. So for a nigga who talking about, oh, I just do this shit because I like to do it, I don't take you niggas serious. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I'm, you the niggas who I be talking to. Niggas be want to know. Like, <laughs> oh, I went on a rant. I be talking my shit. Woo, woo, woo. I'm talking to whoever it applies to, nigga. You know what I'm talking about? Like, if, if the shoe fit. Put that bitch Wear on that and lace bitch. them up. You know what I'm talking Wear about? It. If it don't Facts. apply, let it fly, my nigga. If it right. don't apply, let it fly, let my it nigga. Fly, but nigga. if it do apply, you don't have to question, nigga. I am talking to you. You know what I'm talking about? Like, right. 100% I'm talking to you, nigga. I, do, do you think Do you think um, that everything has to match? 
as far as like an artist goes like from Arizona because Arizona hip hop like we already at a disadvantage because we're not we're not a we're not a black state you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. we're not we're not mm-hmm. a black state it's not a lot of black people here and hip hop is black culture right. um so even the smallest of details have have to match and like with you I believe I'd be like okay if I was a label I could mark a big doobie the big nigga the fly nigga like that's the big nigga in hip hop has a market mm-hmm. biggie smalls rick ross mm-hmm. uh fat joe mm-hmm. the big nigga do you do you feel like arizona artists miss the um the swag portion of it um not necessarily it's it's just it, it just be, depends because and that's that's the problem with oversaturation is that you will see you know 80 bum ass niggas and then you'll only see four five fresh niggas you know what i mean like First of all, like you look at niggas like Daily Finesse, you look at niggas like, you know, even uh Dub Fuego, you know what I mean? Play niggas is saucy. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Niggas got swag, niggas got sauce, niggas and niggas is dope. You know what I mean? But when you get a 80 other MC Levines trying to pop and promote, and you see these niggas in, you know, uh them Walmart Jordans with the symbol looking crazy and all this weird <laughs> shit. Right. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck is like what where like who Exactly like you said, like, nigga, who are you marketing this bullshit to, nigga? Right. You looking like a Ross mannequin. You know what I'm talking about? Like, no, this shit is not fresh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but you rapping about all this money and all this weird shit, nigga, and you in right. here with some 501 jeans on or some whole Wranglers on or some shit. Like, boy, nobody believe you, nigga. <laughs> like, all this costume ass jewelry or some shit these niggas be wearing. Like, nobody believe you, niggas. So, I don't know what, how am I supposed to take you serious, my nigga, when you coming out here with this whole party city setup on. You know what I mean? You looking like a Halloween character. Uh, what you supposed to be a rapper for Halloween, nigga? Because you know that jewelry is not real. You know, the real price for that shit would be like 120,000, right? You know that, right? That, so like, that so that so that matters 100%. essentially. It should Listen, matter. It it should. Right. And that's why what what's really going on behind the scenes is like there's a conglomerate coming together of of the dopest illest niggas in Arizona that's going to really be pushing each other's line. When you hear me, you're going to hear them. When you hear them, you're going to hear me. Right. And we're going to push each other. We're going to be Next, you're going to see us at every Rolling Loud, South by South, with every event going on, you're going to see us there. You're going to see us pushing each other and pushing the line. Like I tell you, I'm from Detroit. I'm not one of these niggas that's from somewhere else and can't, ain't connected back home. Right, that's not connected, right. Detroit is the number one rap destination right now. Right. Everybody is jocking Detroit sweat, all of that shit. So this is how these niggas did it. These niggas, one nigga gonna go, other niggas gonna blow because when you hear him, you hear a project from him, you hear a, a peasy project, you gonna hear Babyface Ray and you gonna hear this, you know, Dame Doc, you gonna hear all these different artists which allow everybody to bubble and everybody that was a part of that shit to blow. And then people around was able to pick up and blow. We never, we haven't had that really where like all the dope artists like, these niggas get dope and then instantly think they Drake or some shit and don't want to work with each other and all this <laughs> extra weird shit. I ain't on that. You know what I mean? Why like, is that? Why is that? Um, like, in, as far as Arizona hip hop goes, there's several collabs that should be done. J Rob and Merkel should have a song together. Uh, J Rob and Judge got a song together. DJ I probably got the only song that she'll never release to anybody in the world. <laughs> you. You and you and J- fucking J Rob, you and fucking Alexis, like see, see, how come niggas ain't working together like that? It is though, it's coming. You know what I mean? Like it's just because it never was really said. You know what I mean? Like everybody was so focused on just being in their own lane, and but there's that shit has a, a fucking stop at it. You know what I mean? There's right. a a roadblock when you only focus on your own lane and you not you know building this super highway of Arizona music. You know what I'm talking right. about? Right. So. I've I've had conversations and am in the works with songs with J Rob the Chief. You know what I'm talking about? Like I, because when I see niggas in person face to face, I push that line. I push that agenda. 100%. You know what I'm talking about? So I I've had conversations. Like I'm working on a new song with Merkins right now. Like I'm I am tapping in with these artists. You know what I mean? Judge yeah, the boss. Should. I'm in Judge here. Me and Judge just had a conversation. We finna put some shit together. Big face. We finna put some shit together. You know, all the niggas who I feel 
need to be pushing each other's line to really help this shit grow, turn this Arizona hip hop house into a mansion. I'm on niggas' heads. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I am on these niggas' heads. I'm in niggas' inbox, and I don't get no funny niggas. Ain't none of these niggas ever played me to the left or played me funny style. You know what I mean? Like, niggas be genuinely like, let's make some shit happen because, like I said, all it takes, like, I, I don't have that ego, you know what I mean, or that pride to where I feel like I can't reach out. Like, nigga, I'm only two and a half years in. If you've been doing this shit for three years, you've oh, you you been doing this shit longer than me, so I don't feel like, oh, I'm big doobie. I don't, I can't be asking niggas to be right. collabing. I'm like, what, what you talking about? And you niggas gonna be stagnant then. You know what I'm talking about? Like I said, my goal is to be the richest, so I know that part of that, I'm gonna have to collab with the dopest artists out here. So right. you will hear a big doobie in J-Rob. You will hear a big doobie in Merkins, a big doobie in Young Face, a big doobie in, in Dove Fuego, a big doobie in That's Trap what I Money want. AK. I want like that big doobie in Dove. You're going to hear all of these songs. You know what I mean? And I'm going to be pushing. That's why I'm so locked in like Trap, like checking Trap. Shout out my boy checking Trap, man. Like, We've been locked in since the Doobie Boy days when he was OTS and, right. you know, with G-Man and all them. Like, them, that's family. You know what I'm talking about? Like, just off, off of all kind of shit that we done been through and done together that didn't have nothing to do with me and music. You know what I'm talking about? So when I started to do music, it only made sense. You know what I mean? Like, okay, let me lock back in with my brother. And he is a super plug out here. I don't understand why more niggas, but that's that. I don't know if it's that pride, that ego, whatever it is, but... Like I said, he is a plug. He is an industry plug. There right. are literal people in the industry who want to hear what he has to say and literally ask him what's going on with Arizona hip hop, why these niggas can't get out their own way. And that's why I'm like, I don't want to fall into that mold at all. I don't want to fall into the, oh, here go another Arizona nigga who started buzzing and then now nah, this nigga think he too big before he actually ever really did shit. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That's that's a that's a fucking sickness out here that niggas do. It really that. is. Like my like, nigga, who is? Are you niggas Drake? Are you niggas the baby? Are you niggas little baby? Are you niggas forty two Doug? Even are you niggas even side of baby? Are you niggas getting booked for thousands of dollars multiple times a month for you? You know, are are you niggas? I don't see it. So I don't understand how niggas can have these egos as if they've done something when nigga, you ain't done shit. You niggas is not like futuristic made an M. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Like he, he in his own lane, he do his own thing. You know what I'm talking about? But he give back and fuck with who he choose to fuck with. Right. And he put a platform out to where anybody could fuck with him if you want to. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Like what's your, what's your thoughts on that? Because, uh Black media, the Hatrix, Certified Savage, LMG, uh, Karanda Don, we get a lot of pushback from um, only fucking with, like, they say the agenda. Like, we only fuck, we only pushing the same amount of artists. Which I do. <laughs> in my opinion <laughs> on it is, like, in order for, in my opinion, in order for Arizona hip hop to flourish, you have to keep pushing the hot niggas. That's a fact. That's that's a fact. And only niggas who belly ache about that is whack niggas. You know what I'm talking about? Like only the whack niggas who is not getting their shit pushed, who who have this weird, you know, self entitlement thinking that they should be. Oh, I've been doing this for this. Is you know, is is delusions of grandeur is what these niggas have. You niggas think you doper than you really are. Right. You know what I'm talking about? So so you can't get mad at somebody else for not agreeing with your delusions, my guy. You know what I'm talking about? Or my girl who is <laughs> because it's both. A lot of these female artists is fucking. Garbino, you know what I'm talking about? Like, <laughs> I would never. Garbino, it's a fact, my nigga. Like, I I try to listen. It's, I'm not no nigga who just gonna call you trash because I don't have a relate. I you know we got some bad business or or I don't fuck with you because of this and that. No, everybody know everybody out here fuck with me. In, in in real life. I see niggas in public, it's handshakes and high fives. It's never no animosity, nothing. I don't have Ever. no smoke, no beef with not, they're not a nigga. Niggas don't even look at me funny. And that's a fact. I ain't just saying it like I be out here on no bully ball shit, but I'm a genuine nigga and I show niggas love and respect and in return I get it back. And that's it, it's been like that since I was in the streets. You know what I'm talking about? It's not a hood. I, I'm not no gang banging ass nigga out here. But there's not a hood you can name that is not an OG nigga in that hood or a gangster in there 
that know who the fuck I am. You know what I'm talking right. about? And that's because I I built my name on 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 solid foundation. There's no chinks in my armor. There's not no don't ever be no funny ass paperwork coming back saying I spoke on no nigga. None of that weird shit. No no weird ass charges, nigga. Nothing like that. You know what I mean? I've always been a stand up nigga. So these other niggas are weird. You know what I mean? Like nigga. They have to only push the dope niggas. Are y'all crazy? Let's let's look at something that's successful. The Hip Hop Lab in Detroit, okay? The Hip Hop Lab is the number one podcast in the D. Lando Bando has the ability to help an artist blow. Look at Baby Tron. You know what I'm okay. talking about? Like, that's from his platform. The same as, like, Say Cheese. You know what I mean? Okay. Shit like that. Okay. They are not just putting up anybody, my nigga. You have to, you know, now they've reached a level to where you can pay and they're going to ask niggas, is this whack or not? Because they have built that platform up enough. But right. initially, just because you say you rap, my nigga, and you went. Doesn't give you an automatic pass. Does Seriously. not. Like, who is checking for you, my nigga? Like, like what song is hot? What what do, like, I I have to like the shit. You know what I mean? Like, if y'all don't like the music, what y'all look like? All right, here comes a song from such and such. I don't really fuck with it, but uh, I'm just going to play it because he a rapper, so here you go. <laughs> That's what they want us to do. Like, what? So That's you exactly and your two niggas who you told to listen to can tune in and put some fire emojis on there. And then, but the whole rest of the audience got to sit here and tell you that this shit doo-doo, but they hating on you because they don't want to play it. No, they have to think about their brand. Y'all have to think about y'all brand, too. Y'all don't want y'all brand associated with fuckery. So. Period. Don't play no fuckery. These niggas be on that bullshit. Like, I listen to you niggas' lyrics. I hear you niggas' songs. My nigga, that is not it. I promise you, my nigga. I, I ain't hating on none let's, of you. Let's talk, let's talk about uh, two two national platforms that recently came to Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, let's talk about Bars I-95. Mm -hmm. um, I know you didn't get to do your full verse mm -hmm. on that one. What was what was your thoughts about the entire bars on I five that I still have not seen yet? Experience, yeah. DJ I hasn't seen it yet. The experience, um, even though Breezy, that's my guy, mm -hmm. um, love Breezy, that's Merkel's manager, mm -hmm. but I felt he should have he should have reached out to probably core DJ I or myself to curate the artists that should have got up there and spit because. I believe not everybody is that fucking freestyle rapper. That's like, that's a skill. That's like to get up there and spit bars. A lot of niggas is good at songs. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't want J-Rob up there. I'm sorry, but J-Rob is one of my favorite rappers. Right. Mm -hmm. But in bars on 95, no, mm -hmm. stay the fuck away, J-Rob. I don't want you here. I don't want J-Rob on Thizzler. I don't want you here. I want you making fucking songs that I can cry to. <laughs> that I can go in the closet with my Bible and fucking cry. That's the songs I want. What was your thoughts of that experience? I mean, every platform is not for everybody. You know what yeah, I mean? So, that so it's that's that's a hundred percent facts. Like some niggas, like just to give an example, bars on I nine five Thizzler. But if say American Idol was out here. I feel like J Rob can go on American Idol and get his motherfucking ticket to go to Hollywood. Cook. You know what I'm yeah, talking yeah. about? He'll be Whereas on if there. I go on American Idol, I'm gonna become a meme. You know what I'm talking about? So <laughs> it's every platform is not for everybody. You know what I'm talking about? But so for bars on I 95, I thought it was definitely dope. You know what I mean? Okay. Like the 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 cipher portion that, you know, afterwards, first of all, I've never seen them release cypher footage on that platform i went and looked at all the past <laughs> they don't, they don't. so i for so we're that never gonna see it no no unless you get it from tone or pass or somebody like that like or they Dev, got the devastation has it yeah. as well Salute they my nigga oh, you got all of it Ugh. but see <laughs> me Pass personally like like i can i'm gonna speak on my experience like shout out breeze that's my man's like breezing on my whole family and shit too from back in the day um but like me personally, now that like if I could have went back, I wouldn't have done the same rap on bars on I nine five that I was going to do. Why? I wouldn't Why? have done it Why? Um, for a couple of different reasons. Like for one, like in my mind, I was looking at it as if I was going to get to like sit and and like I'm sitting here and just perform this whole song. So I was going to take that platform to shout out who I thought was dope in AZ, you know, which is what I end up doing in the right. freestyle. But in hindsight, 
that's not for that. You know See, what I mean? and I'm gonna keep out because me and DJ, I, we, we we talk about this all the time. I'll be honest with you, I was like, I don't because that's a national platform, and right. niggas in New York is don't not know. gonna know yeah. about yeah. Trap Money AK. They're not gonna know. Not saying Trap Money AK is not in New York, but, I know but I'm saying. saying they're not gonna know about all the niggas that you gave flowers to. Yeah, like they wanted more of the Detroit flow. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. In hindsight, I would not, even though I didn't get to spit the whole shit. I'm happy I didn't get to spit the whole shit because mm. I felt like it would have just been more of a waste of a time. You know what I mean? Like it would have been more. That's not for that. You know what I mean? Right. Like that's not for that. I I I did that on the pest freestyle, and that's for that because. Right. People who are gonna see that, even if they do see it otherwhere, but that's mainly for here, and and it'll grow from here. So the people who I'll need to hear it, and and which are the people who I'm naming in the shit, I made that for them. You know what I mean? Like right. that's for us. This is for Arizona hip hop. So right. that's not for a national platform like that. So in hindsight, like I said, I don't I don't never care about that footage being. I don't care. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I got my my performance. I ain't never post it. You know what I mean? Because right. I don't care. I don't care about that. Yeah, like, right. it, it, it's not, I don't feel like it's going to help me or hurt me in any any way. You know what I mean? Like, I shouted them out. When I got tagged and shit, I reposted to my story and all that type of shit. But I'm not going to make no content behind that shit because I don't, it, I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like, it's, right. it's they're not going to redo, like, they're not going to release it. It's not nothing that's going to build up to this content. Like, what you see is just going to be it. You know what I mean? Like, maybe I'll say that for a documentary, you know, later on down the line, a clip in the documentary. But, you know, it was a dope experience to be able to be around that, um, to see that kind of spotlight on Arizona, uh, to see Merkham shine like that. Like, like Merkham's my guy. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I love seeing that nigga shine. I love seeing... His grind, you know, he he is one of the artists that motivates me. You know what I mean? Like right. when I'm in the studio and I'm and I'm coming up with songs and I'm putting these bars together, I never feel like I can take a bar off. And he is one of the artists that make me feel like that. You know what I mean? Like that's beautiful, man. I can't take no bars off because Merc is killing niggas. You know what I mean? There's certain artists out here that I feel like I can't take bars off. Can't take bars no, off. I don't take no bars off. Like nigga can listen to any song I ever release. There's not, I've never released a whack verse ever. You know what I mean? Like I have never put out a whack and there's not a lot of artists who can say that, but I'm willing to bet and stand on whatever, whatever, any song that I've ever released since I've been doing music 2019, I've never put out a whack verse, let alone a, a whack song. I've never released a whack verse and that's how I attack every song though. And it's artists out here that push me to be that way. You know what I'm talking about? And, and that's, good. that's what I mean. Like, Arizona has it, man. It's just we just need to, you know, let our powers combine. We we can form Captain Planet around this bitch. You know what I'm talking about? Like, <laughs> but everybody's yeah, still can. out here like this. You know what I'm talking about? Instead of putting that fist together, and niggas are still, but now it's you know, we starting to it's starting to look more like this or something. You know what I mean? Right, like that fist right. is coming together. But soon, you know what I mean? Soon. We we working. We working. I now, Thizzler. You didn't get the rhyme on Thizzler. Mm -hmm. Um it was I didn't I didn't know about it till two hours before that they was even having it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wasn't really up on it. Uh, what, what's your overall thoughts on it? Um, me personally, I thought Arizona kind of, well, the guy, Clee C. Lee, mm -hmm. he didn't know he, he's not from Arizona. So right. he's just, whoever's on the fucking live, I'm about to pick these niggas and they going to rap. Mm -hmm. So the niggas that he picked that rap, like at least 90% of them wasn't spitting that shit to 90, me. 99. I'll say about closer to 97. 97? Yeah, yeah. It, was, it wasn't a good showing. But, but so the thing about the Thizzler, like, I genuinely am tapped in with that outside of just that one episode. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I won a Thizzler highlight when it wasn't an Arizona night. Just being on the live one night when he was tagging niggas in from any all over the country. Okay. And he picked me, and I won a highlight. You know what I mean? Like, scissors out all of that like i know that my music and my verses travel i know that when i get booked for shows out of town and i go places the reaction i get in phoenix i get that reaction everywhere you know niggas is oh my god my nigga you the truth my nigga hey, we need to do this let me get that's how i got them near 2000 ig followers in two years and never bought one you know what i mean like these are mm. genuine people that organic on the app 100 percent. so i the Thizzler thing, like, yeah, I wanted to get picked so I can get up there and talk my shit because 
in my mind, I knew I'm about to kill everybody. Any, I don't care who they pick to rap. I'm about to kill these niggas. I'm about to spit one of these awesome and amazing ass verses, and I'm about to kill this shit. And then that's another thing niggas be getting confused. Like my nigga, when they oh he ain't he wrote that or is that off the top of the head? Blah, blah, blah. Nobody gives a fuck, but you rap niggas. <laughs> <laughs> What is you talking about? Nobody gives a fuck. Nigga, at all. is it dope or is it not? Nigga, niggas is, is not going back like, trash? you know what? That verse was a 10, but I'm going to give it a 9.8 because I think he wrote it. Like, nigga, on why fucking, does it matter? Yes. Nigga, <laughs> you are, are you trying to leave an impression? Because that shit you're doing off the top of your head leaves a different kind of impression. Like, yeah. oh, this nigga, one of these. You just sound like just another old rapidy rap ass. Uh, I'm, I'm drinking a 40 and I'm spitting uh, right. with my shorty ass niggas. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that shit is not impressive. It's only a few niggas who can really come off the top of the head. Like, niggas have no idea. Nigga, I can come off the top of the head and sound better than a nigga who wrote this shit for a month. You yeah, know what I'm talking right, about? Right. But I don't even, I, I don't care if a nigga know that I'm coming off the top or if they think, that's, y'all decide. Y'all right. guess it and think if you want to. Sometimes I'll use verses that I already done used on these niggas that I know it ain't been heard yet. Because I want to make, if it's depending on the type of impression I'm trying to make, I know that I can come out the clip with a couple of verses that's going to blow niggas' minds, no matter who it is. If you listening to rap and you like to hear niggas talk shit, I got some verses that I can come out the clip with and blow a nigga mind at any time of the and day, cook. anywhere. Yes. Yeah. So, and, cook. and I just felt like what he was doing, like him just picking random niggas, like, yeah, he picked some niggas who I even thought should have went a little harder that I was expecting more out of. You know what I'm talking about? But yeah, I agree. But, you know, for, you know, Chris Coke did his motherfucking thing. Shout out Chris Coke. But, you know, Chris Coke always got that asterisk next to his shit because dogs say niggas so much and that shit is not accepted everywhere. You know, it's not yeah. received every, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know a famous Mexican rapper that say nigga. I never heard Little Rob say nigga or nothing. But even though that's, Mr. Mag MC Magic doesn't say nigga. You know no, what I mean? But all. but they not in the same kind of lane. You know, Chris Coke is a gangster in real life. You know what I'm talking about? Like, Chris Coke is a gangster. So he talked that gangster shit. But he he has to he has to make a decision on if, you know what I mean? Like what you really trying to do with this shit, my nigga, because these motherfuckers is not finna fuck with you in real life saying nigga. You know what nah, I mean? Nah, they can't like, no no label like with the money. Like it's a bank essentially, so yeah. they're saying, okay, we're gonna give you X amount of dollars to promote your music, and you say a nigga, no, because yeah. nobody no. gonna fuck with my company. Yeah, man. So, so you know, that's like Chris Coke can really rap a lot of these niggas under the table. Yeah, he can rap. Easy yeah. Chris Coke you know can fucking I mean? like, rap. Easy work, you know what I mean? In his sleep, he'll rap niggas under the table. It's but gonna be them general consumers. That's gonna tear his ass apart. Yeah, man. When they, like, when they hear him say that shit, that's what's gonna happen. And that's what I mean. Like I've I've seen that a couple of times out here. Like some dope ass Mexican artists, yep. but they say nigga, so it's just like, eh, you know, like like if if it's different, you know, if niggas around you allow you to talk like that, my nigga, and it's not no problem, like. Niggas never sweat at you about that shit. Then it's gonna be hard for you to break that if that's how you really talk. You know what I right. mean? Right, and like, you can't get mad when a like when another black person say, "I don't want you to say it." Yeah, bro. <laughs> like you, have you to sound understand. crazy. Like, yeah, you like like other what's his name um, Nuggy G, whatever dog is like nigga. You can't. We can call you that, bro. But you can't <laughs> reciprocate it. You're talking about. But what I can say about Nuggy G is that when I did call him, because when Nuggy G did it when, on a hip hop festival, he performed and he said, "Nigga, I cut that shit off." Okay? Oh shit! I definitely cut it off. He's like, "I got more." I'm like, "Ain't nobody listening to that shit." Like, what the fuck you over here saying, <laughs> nigga? But what I can say is, when I actually really addressed him, uh -huh. like he accepted it. He was like, "Okay, I understand where you coming from." You da, 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 da. I don't think I've heard any music from him since then lately that he's been doing that has nigga in it. So yeah. I think he may still say it from time to time, depending on who he's around. Yeah. But like, if I'm there, I think he respects me enough to not say it around me. Right. And I don't think he really says it in his music anymore. Yeah. So I can, I can respect that. You yeah. feel me? Like, and that's what I'm saying. Like it's, it's, it's hard for, and I, you know, cause I empathize with Chris Coke too. Like, you raised around niggas, you know what I mean? You've been doing niggerish shit your whole life. You in hip-hop culture. You in hip-hop, like, you you know what I mean? If you close your eyes, nigga, and you might think, you, you hear you talk, you might think you a nigga, you know what I mean? But 
in in the you real world, my nigga, in real life, outside of that bubble, my nigga, that shit is not accepted. You know what I'm talking <laughs> right, about? So right. it's like, uh, you know, but rapping wise, nigga can't say shit about dog rapping. Like, right. you know what I mean? I I choose him over, you know, 98.9% of these niggas. You know what I mean? Like, dog is a, a animal with the rap shit. But aside from him, nobody really spit nothing memorable for me. You know what I'm talking okay. about? Like, like that yeah. made me sit and want to just be like, oh, yeah, he he going crazy. I felt like it was so much trash that they started to dilute champion mediocrity because they like, OK, well, this nigga is a, a F minus. Well, this nigga here, he a D plus at least. So let's just give him some props because he a D plus. Like when all actuality, we got A plus niggas out here. You know what right. I mean? Like I think Will Nice, though, I think Will Nice did good. But I also think that he didn't have that energy. The same because he spit the, the same verse yeah. that was in the back of the car. Yeah. That yeah. The second time he spit it wasn't the same energy as that other verse. Yeah, I think if he would have had that energy, I think he could have won that whole thing, but he needed the energy. And then I think Young Sweep, I think he did good. But then when he fumbled the bag on the second part, it just took away. Young from Sweep the first was on there? Part. Yeah, so Young Sweep went first. Oh, I didn't know that. He went first or second. And he did good on the first verse, but it uh, the second verse he fumbled, so he like he like took him off. So it was just like, yeah. but he did good on the first verse. Yeah, See, man. that's why, that's why I like I like you, Doobie. I like um, Trap Money, AK. I like Chris Coke because when and other artists as well. Not trying to sing nobody out, but when you in this shit and you're asked to fucking rap, like you rapping from a different fucking place and it comes out like, nigga, I'm mm -hmm. fucking spitting. Like, yeah. there's no, I'm not nervous. I'm not coming off. Like, that's why I tell, like, nigga, when you, when you on this motherfucking microphone and you have this platform, nigga, fucking go spit, like yeah. fucking rhyme, like trap money, AK on the, on the viral video, like trap money, AK embodies like you just know, like what he's rapping is his fucking life. It's his life, yeah. yeah. He he's he's giving you therapy. Like it's therapeutic to him because he probably has so much held inside that when he's spitting, he's just letting all that shit out, and it's you you can feel. It. And that's that's what separates um certain artists from certain artists. That's what mm -hmm. separates it. That's a fact. I agree. That's a fact. Shout out Trevor and AK man. I was just talking to my nigga earlier today. But, but that's what you too though do because when you perform. Like you could feel all the emotion in what you be saying, right. and that's why I feel like like your songs, like your songs is good. But then when you perform the songs, it gives it this extra, yeah. like damn, okay, because yeah, yeah, yeah. his tone, it's damn, oh, exactly, his tone is yep. like piercing. Like yep. your voice yep. is like yep. like piercing. Like when I was um, when we was at bars on I five, I think I said something like, "Or oh, turn his mic up." He was yep. like, "Nigga, I ain't one of these low voice ass niggas." Yeah. I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. <laughs> like let's go. I'm ready like, to rumble. He commands the room. Like, you could be a fucking host. You could do podcasts and you could do fucking radio. Like, yep. you just have that fucking voice. You could do voiceovers and all that shit, man. That's dope. Yeah. And and that's crazy. Like, you know, when I work a job, I work on the phone type shit. I'm not a outside, being outside type of nigga. Right. And yeah. every old white person always say, like, why don't you do voiceovers? I, yeah. I had to really research commercials. that shit. You yeah, do like, commercials. They're like, you need to be on radio or something like you. I'm like, oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and buy this Cox cable. For me. <laughs> 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 uh, but, you know, like, I, but I'm a, like, artists who rap about their life always have an advantage to me. You know what I mean? Like, yep. when you are able to put your life on, on these beats and convey it in a way that people want to hear it and they understand it, yeah. you are at an advantage to me. You know what I mean? Like, I rap about my life. You know what I mean? Like, I rap about shit that I've been through, seen and done, me and my niggas. Like, niggas can vouch for the shit that I say. I don't have to say, oh, you can ask this or you can ask this one. Like, when they hear the songs, the certain shit I say, you know what I mean? the motherfuckers are going to hear it and they're going to be like, holy shit, this nigga's talking about real life shit. Right. And that's all that, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have to, I don't have to champion this shit or champion, like, them kind of niggas is weird to me. The niggas that always got to come and say, oh, I'm this and I'm that and I'm this. Like, if you really that, they're going to tell you. you the, the, the people are going to speak for you. You know what I mean? Like, I see niggas making posts quoting my lyrics. You know what I mean? So I know niggas is listening and paying attention to what I say. Like, right. I see a nigga quote, you know, 
lyrics and shit that I say in my songs and and I ain't never, you know, I don't know, niggas ain't gotta tell me like, oh, I'm listening to your music, I'm listening to it, I'm doing this. Like, I see my streams, I know my shit is getting streamed, I know my shit, where it's being streamed at. But when I see shit like that, it let me, it, it gives me like, that's the type of reassurance and shit that I need checking my boxes like, oh yeah, this shit is working. I need to keep, I need to go harder. I ain't going hard enough, you know, I need to go harder because it is, it, this shit is really working for me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm getting booked at shows out of town and getting paid to come out of town to perform and getting paid for features and shit like that. Like, okay, I need to go hard. I need to turn it up a notch. You know what I'm talking about? Like, but that's just not the case for everybody. It's, at all. it's definitely not. That's true. And you, you take advantage of like great opportunities, like the, um, the shade four or five thing that was at the, uh, the, mm-hmm. the, um, loyalty lounge. Mm-hmm. You perform at that. You perform at the hip hop festival. Um, what do you think? What What do you think um, is going to be the next level for Big Doobie to like? Do you want to like cultivate a fan base, or you say, okay, this year I got two hundred loyal niggas that's going to show up to my show. Next year I want three hundred. Or are you trying to say, well, fuck it. If If Def Jam comes here tomorrow, nigga, I'm signing a Def Jam. Push the button. Like, wh- where do you want to go? Um, so I am not like, I'm definitely not doing this to try to get signed. Like, okay. um, if, if the right opportunity presents itself, 100%, I'm going to take advantage of it. You know what I mean? But I am not just finna sign for a chain or, or <laughs> that's not, I'm not, I'm not that type of nigga. You know what I mean? Like I'm not finna sign for a chain. I'm not finna sign just to say that I'm signed. You know what I mean? Like there has to be a serious bag or the potential for me to make a serious bag attached to this affiliation. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, it's now, like, I've been offered to go on three separate tours this year. You know what I mean? Like, to tour with other artists, to get a feeling that. That's really, like, I haven't even told outside of my inner circle, but I think I'm going to tour for the entire month of November. Um so it's like a 27 city tour or something like that Damn. for the entire month of November. What artist? Is it a, are you opening for an artist or um, is it going to be yeah. you? It's um um one of the tour options is Gremlin, um, I think is and then I forget dog. Who was that Futuristics open mic um the last one he did whoever that headline and artist was. It's a tour with him and then it's a tour with the Oz Squad. Um, okay, with nubs in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing a show with them next month. Um, shout out Rome. Oh, I seen that. Yeah, um, I'm doing a show with them, but they also offered me to go on tour with them in November for. Nigga, do that shit. That's Wait, smart. November 11th, we need you in Miami though. For yeah, the core, core DJ retreat. 100, percent 100. The so only reason I wasn't in point. Dallas, yeah, I, yeah, 100. percent That's that's you say less. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm gonna be at every major. You know what I mean? You're going to start seeing more Arizona artists at all these major industry events. You know what I mean? Like representing us, letting people know, you know, not just being there to be there either. I'm talking about right. being there to work and to grind to, and to network be seen and yeah. to put, a, put us on the map. I'm talking about in these same VIP booths, popping these bottles, doing that shit like right. that shit really matters. And that's one thing I, I know about out here, too, like. Before, when we was in the clubs, like you were saying, Judge the Boss, OTS, OTS, all these niggas, these niggas was in the clubs. These niggas were out here in these clubs. They was popping bottles. They was making their name. The the females out here was fucking with these niggas. So when they did do something, they didn't have to sit and beg to, to and have nobody come out to their shows to, and perform in front of nothing but a bunch of other rappers because they was doing the groundwork out here in these streets. A lot of these rappers out here don't do that shit. Right, why do they? Why do? Why do? I don't know. Maybe it's the uh, the smoke and mirrors of social media. But why do people think that the groundwork is dead? I don't know. I I don't know. I I don't. I can't relate. You know what I mean? Like I don't. I can't even understand that train of thought. That's why. I'm at events that I don't have anything to do with me and I'm going to come and I'm going to show up and I'm going to be fresh and I'm going to pop my bottles and niggas going to want to talk to me. I'm going to shake hands. I'm going to network. I'm going to get IGs and phone numbers and, and all of this type of shit. Even if I'm not performing, like what was that event? Uh, uh, the Mac the Pharaoh, um, the, the security thing y'all did, the security bag. I right. didn't perform, but was I not there? Was I not? 
the only rapper I seen with a bottle. You know what I'm talking about? Like, just to be honest, like niggas wasn't in there popping bottles That's or doing crazy. nothing. I was in there with my lit up bottle. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? No sparkling. No but I did have my bottle was lit up. I'm drinking and pouring tone up a drink. Right. Always trying to get awesome to drink. Like I'm I'm in right. here showing love and rubbing, even if it don't have nothing to do with me. And what is as a result of that, you know what I mean? Maybe 20 or 30 more Instagram followers, a connection. I, I had a conversation. That's the first time I had a real face-to-face conversation with J-Rob. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Exchanged information. Like we talk over social media, but now we see each other. You see how I'm moving. You see what type of energy right. I'm on. Okay, yeah, this is my producer, man. Let's put it together. Woo, woo. We working. You know what I'm talking about? Like, is is I see these other rappers even not performing. They just in here just sitting around like, oh, you niggas don't think y'all nobody? Nigga, I'm a somebody. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Like, when it I'm, don't stop from you logging out of your app. Exactly. It don't stop. I'm it somebody in it. real life. It goes back to what you were saying earlier, entitlement. Yeah, man, these niggas weird. is all entitled. They feel like they don't got to go to no, nowhere. They feel like they don't have to network. They feel like they don't got to collab. They feel like they don't have to do nothing. And that's, and that's why, why you be moving around like how you move. Yeah, that's why everybody show me love. That's why if I do a show, I don't have a problem getting 40, 50 people, 60 people. I I don't have a problem with that. I don't, it doesn't, there's not even a question in my mind. You know what I mean? Like, Niggas is gonna pop out. I'm gonna bring my camera crew out. We gonna show. We gonna do it big. We gonna pop bottles. We are gonna have fun. We gonna be the niggas who the niggas want to be around and the bitches want to be with. That's the that you a artist. You a rapper, right? Like that's who you supposed to be. Like who do you think you gonna like? Now, who your favorite rapper, my nigga? Do niggas want to be him and do bitches want to be with them? Yes. Okay. So why do you think that don't apply for you? You know what I mean? I'm that nigga who niggas want to be and bitches want to be with. That's that's my goal. When I step out, I have to represent that. That's who I am all the time, On not just on the internet. And that's why it's a difference. Niggas only exist on the internet. Some niggas only exist on Facebook, which is way f- more fucked up. You know that's what I mean? That's the worst like, one right there. Niggas don't even exist on Instagram or no other platforms. Twitter, or nothing. TikTok. None of that shit. You know what I mean? Where... I, I drop a reel in less than 24 hours, I'm knocking on 2,000 views on it. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Like, and that's just because I, I do this shit on all. I don't, I'm not just a Facebook nigga. I never wanted to be that. I don't want to be the head of Facebook artists. You know what I mean? Or <laughs> uh, I don't want that. You don't want to sign the Zuckerberg. No, 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 no. I'm not a member of Facebook records. Like, I use <laughs> Facebook for what I wanted to use it for, mostly entertainment purposes. You know what I mean? Like, it's days that I post on every platform but Facebook. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Because yeah. I just don't even be seeing, like, it, that's really just for entertainment. That's just for local Arizona shit. You know what I'm talking about? Like, niggas ain't posting like me yeah i post some shit it's gonna get seen in detroit and in arizona pretty much my two markets you know what i'm talking about like i got a strong fan base in detroit i'm not a fucking ghost i go home all the time you know what i'm talking about I, right. i'm on seven miles still nigga i'm still at strictly's i'm still eating big corned beef sandwiches on a mile nigga i'm i'm still him you know what i'm talking about no matter where the fuck <laughs> did you I go, go to jet pizza out here they got a jet pizza out here i'm a it buddy's pizza same. kind of guy yeah I, I'm, is, I'm, jet, is that detroit pizza but I don't know. Jets. No, I don't think that's... It's that one of, dog place. It's that dog, Coney Island. Oh, yeah, baby. I don't think... That, but they that's got a Coney Detroit Islands Coney? Out, they got Coney Islands out here. It yeah, that's not the, it's yeah, not real. Same. Yeah, they ain't got they ain't got the chili and cheese. They ain't yeah, got they ain't got shit like corn that. Corn beef. They ain't got... I had Coney Islands when I went to Detroit. That oh, shit out here boy. is not the same. Period. For real? Like, like, nigga, I, my uncle got a sandwich named after him at the Coney in Detroit, like the Carlton. You know what I'm talking about? Like, <laughs> like we rooted. Like, I'm not... Yeah. I'm not one of them niggas who got chased out the city, nigga. I came out here as a kid. Oh, you because, ain't out here in hiding. No, oh, I was okay. about to kill me a nigga in the city, to be honest. That's how I came out here. Jesus, do me. Nigga, my mama and my dad split up, like, in my eighth grade year. And I didn't see my mama or hear from her for, like, a year or something. And next thing I know, I hear she got some boyfriend that and whooped her ass. So I found out where dog lived at, and I went to kill this nigga 100%. But he had got fired a couple weeks before. So once... Word of that shit got back to my auntie and my dad and them like, yo, this nigga Lil Terry trying to kill something. You know, get this nigga out of here. That's how I came to Arizona the first time, nigga, was my family was trying to get me out, up out of a, oh, this nigga finna be on a some tox- crazy a shit. A toxic yeah, situation. Yeah. So I never, I don't understand these niggas that get chased out. The, niggas don't even fuck with you and your music. I'm like, niggas who I went to elementary school and middle school with and high school with or whatever, uh, niggas who I was friends with because our daddies bowled on the same bowling team and all that kind of shit, they still love me to this day, nigga. I don't have no 
I, I ain't fell out with none of my niggas that I grew up with ever because I always been a solid nigga. Like, it's niggas who've known me since, you know, nigga, we was in the bellies at the same time. You know what I mean? Our mamas was pregnant together. Still my nigga to this day. You know what I'm talking about? I never even had an argument with my niggas. Me and my nigga, we've never argued. You know what I'm talking about? Like, we talk shit and we joke and we check each other, keep each right. other in check, but we don't argue and fight and bicker over yeah, little shit. shit. Yeah, no, Never. None of my niggas. Never. Ever. All my niggas love me because I love my niggas back. You know what I'm That's talking about? That's how like, you got to be. You got to keep that shit solid. So never. I wanted to ask you, Doobie, next year, do you see Arizona hip hop being, having some sort of representation at Rolling Loud? <sighs> 2023. I'm going to say I, 2023 is close. Like, yes, I, I would love to say yes, you know, but there's a lot of things that would have to happen between now and then for that to really come into fruition. But just know that the necessary steps for Arizona to have representation at Rolling Louds and South by Southwest is in summer jams and all these big festivals that you see these artists at, the necessary steps are being put into place. And everybody not going to get to go. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it, this this ain't going to... There's going to be niggas who I know right now, like, once once shit changed, once that shift really happens, is niggas going to feel like they're getting left behind and all this weird shit and all that? Eh, I do not care. You know what I mean? Like, everybody don't deserve the same light, my nigga, because everybody is not the same level of this shit. Everybody is not... Nigga, if we was all the same level dope and all on the same level of shit, then we either would all be all the way out of here or this shit would be 100% dead. You know what I mean? There's levels to this shit. So 2023, we're going to push for, but I can tell you that within the next five years, we will definitely have representation at every major event any across the country. You know what I'm talking about? We so you will, say five years, huh? I say five years. Yeah, within five years. Within. We will have touring artists out of Arizona that's pulling in thousands and thousands of dollars per performance per that's booked. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about booked months and months in advance, nigga, getting twenties and thirty thousand dollars of shows, tens and fifteen thousand dollars of shows. You know what I mean? That shit is in on the horizon, my nigga. And I'm I'm one of the forefront, I'm at the forefront of this shit. One of the niggas that's pushing that line, nigga. You know what I'm talking about? Like I'm getting booked out of town now for Five hundred to a thousand dollars, nigga. So talk that the, the shit. Next, Pay the, your motherfucking year, legends. The next year or two, the price is going up. Everything going up. You know what I'm talking about? There's gonna be more of it, and some more of it, and some more of it. You know what I'm talking about? That's what's up, man. Um, I I I I agree. Um, I think King Emmett. I think King Emmett might he. I don't know. He it might be another two years, but uh. No cap, I do see you in a situation by 2024. Like you, I see you, you're gonna be on a major, like a major scale. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you have planned for the rest of this year? What is what is your rest of your 2022 goals? And what would are you gonna work on EPs or you just doing singles and videos? Uh singles and videos. I'm nice. about to I'm about nice. to drop. We're looking to drop a new single and video every month for the rest of the year. Um <laughs> was that the one they played on the uh flashes mix no oh what yes it is that? yes it that's is. my shit she's talking about some guacamole nigga that's my shit so, uh, nah, uh, 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 that's my shit that's yeah, another of uh, me putting real life on the shit like yeah i go to costco for that walk and that chicken bake. You know what I'm talking about? She's talking about... Hey, I that like, chicken. Like, when I first heard that song, I'm like, why is this nigga do be talking about guacamole? Like, what uh, are you, you talking about Have right you now? ever had... Have you ever... You been? You got a Costco membership? Nigga. I was at Costco when I was a kid. So I was playing. For $10, you can eat like a fucking king. Like a king. I know. Like a king. I just king. didn't know what he was talking about. I'm like, why is he going to Costco for guacamole? I was why saying that walk. Right now? So... Now I get it. I get it now. <laughs> yeah. We had a whole conversation. Yes. About this. Like, it yes. was crazy. Salute that, uh, salute that chicken and bake man it's that just it's, it's amazing it's my real life when i go pick up that prescription there's no way i'm walking past that booth and not getting me a chicken bake gotta get you that <laughs> fucking chicken bake man i'm not gonna lie I sometimes keep me a little bottle of frank's red hot hot sauce in the car <laughs> <laughs> so that <laughs> Cash app like is open. That shit is a killer combination, baby. You bite oh that first God. top off, and you start dumping that hot sauce inside that thing, baby. You in for a treat? You That's what's that. up, man. Where, where can where can the fans follow you at, man? Uh, the real big doobie underscore is the IG. 
um, uh, the real big doobie on Twitter. You know, I'm talking about big doobie on uh, TikTok. You know what I mean? I, I've been tapping. What's into your my TikTok, What's your best man. social media site? Uh, IG currently. Okay. Um, IG is currently, you know, definitely where you're gonna be able to get in touch with me faster. Um, definitely where you're gonna get more engagement. Um, TikTok is coming. You know what I mean? I've been been practicing more, having my daughter. You know what I mean? Help me learn this TikTok game a little bit more. So I just had my first video that hit a thousand views, um, which was a freestyle video I put on TikTok, but. You know, that's just, that's a minor goal for me. Like, you know, I've been, I dropped four, five videos that maybe got five, six, seven hundred, but boom, I dropped one that finally hit a thousand. Like, okay, I'm on to something. Growth, any type of growth. Like, slow growth is better than no growth. You know what I'm talking about? Like, and that's what some of these niggas don't understand. Like, you're not stagnant if you're growing. Even if you're growing, you growing one follower a month, my nigga, you growing. It's growing, just a slow growth. growth. You know what I mean? But, you know, that's that's all I'm about, growing. But, yeah, reach out to me, man. See me on, on IG, man. The real big doobie underscore. That's what's up, man. We definitely appreciate you being our first guest on the uh, Nothing About Nothing podcast. Thank you all for having uh, me, man. Myself, Core DJ. I, this is presented by um, Habari Entertainment. Salute Habari Entertainment for uh, this yeah. beautiful facility. Oh. Amazing yeah, facility. Uh, black owned. Black owned everything. Uh, salute uh, Dev. Uh, devastation on the camera. Uh, he does his thing amazing uh cameraman make sure y'all go ahead and book him dj i where can they find you at and drop your cash app so they can pay you Legends. everything is dj ah uh, well that's a lot so my instagram <laughs> is dj ah uh, underscore icon radio and it's dj ah uh, a h h always two h's not three not one two h's and then uh cash app is dj ah uh, 22 Cause twenty two is my favorite number. In case y'all didn't know, you feel me? I think I got twenty two on my. Okay, on my I didn't jersey, know that. Feel me? Twenty two is my favorite number. That's why my email is djr twenty two at gmail. Cash app djr twenty two. But yeah, djr. You type in djr, I'm gonna come up. Cause okay. you could Google me. You feel me? <laughs> you Google djr. Oh, yeah. my, you feel me? My, my Google's I lit. I come up. You feel me? Just D- Google <laughs> Google djr. Lit. Your Google's I'm lit. On, I'm working on my Google too. You know, you can. We Googled some, some nigga the niggas, other day. We couldn't find that nigga. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> Carpet cleaners came yeah. up. Yeah. Fucking Bikes. vacuum cleaners. Oh. I'm like, what? Nasty. Oh, Google no. DJ. Oh, you feel Man. me? I'm going to come up. My IG going to come up <laughs> instantly. Uh-huh. <laughs> instantly. Make sure y'all follow me. Two-tone superstar and everything. Uh, I don't know what camera I'm at, but uh, I know me neither. What camera I'm at? But this is the Nothing About Nothing podcast. Two tone superstar, uh, core DJ I, DJ I. You can listen to her every Thursday night on the Certified Savage Show, right. and you can listen to me uh, Monday through Friday on the Hatrix. This is our uh, first show that we're doing together for our, our podcast where we talk to interesting people about nothing. So <laughs> it's, it's a podcast about nothing. We out, man. Two tone superstar. We out, man.